Reporting to the media this week at Post-Executive Council Media Briefing is the Secretary in the Division of Tourism and Transportation, Assemblyman Tracy Davidson Celestine, and the Secretary of Health and Social Services, Assemblyman Claudia Groomduke. Virgin Airlines will be back, and the first flight will return on Sunday, the Mar Sunday March 29, 2015 and will start off with a weekly service and later in the year, uh, that is when the winter season starts, it will return to two flights per week. I want to say that the return is important to the destination for a number of different reasons, principally because you have another major international carrier traversing the London Gatwick to Tobago route. And of course, you know that the UK market is a, very, is a very important market for us and a traditional market. And we have been seeing growth in that market over the last uh, three years. It means that we have more than enough airlift coming out of UK to destination Tobago. It, also, it is also significant for us because there are now a number of tour operators on the island car rental owners, gas stations, and a number of Tobagonians who can benefit from the return of Virgin Airlines to Tobago. Outside of that, Virgin Airlines have, and Virgin Holidays have been selling the destination really well. They have been working hand in hand with the Division of Tourism and Transportation, the marketing unit, to market the flight and most importantly, to market the destination. And I must say that there are a number of packages that are in place at this moment. Um, most prominently is the Tobago Jazz Experience Package, which, are selling very, which is selling very well. Moving on to cruise tourism, ladies and gentlemen. As you are aware, the cruise sector has really been a stunning success for us here in the Division of Tourism and Transportation and also in the Tobago context, we have witnessed more than 200% growth. Larger vessels are coming to the destination and are bringing more and more persons. And Carnival would have made the announcement that Tobago will now be added as a port of call. And that too is significant and very important for destination Tobago. Next cruise season, which begins October 2015, we expect and we anticipate another double-digit growth. And so my call now is for Tobagonians to participate, for Tobagonians to prepare for these additional visitors that will be coming to the destination. We want to ensure that we maximize the benefits from cruise tourism as much as possible. We believe that there are still opportunities for us to capitalize on, and that will only happen if we have the participation of all the stakeholders, and most importantly, if we have, all, if we have the full participation of Tobagonians in the process. Of course, shore excursions are very important. It is one of the things that the cruise visitors um, participate in, and especially when you look at the European cruise lines, as much as 65% of those onboard passengers come to the destination to experience what the destination has to offer. And so if we have more onshore excursions, it means more uh, monies to the taxi drivers, to the craft sellers, so to speak, and that can happen, that can only happen if our people participate. And so the call here is for us to participate in what is happening in the tourism sector at this time. Outside of that, we have begun work on our education and community awareness program in the Division of Tourism and Transportation managed by the Product Development Unit. There are two initiatives, or community awareness initiatives, and of course, or tourism awareness project, which will seek to educate our citizenry, which will seek to educate Tobagonians about the opportunities that exist in tourism, 
and how they can capitalize on those opportunities to raise their standard of living. Last week, Thursday, we had the first meeting with regards to the Community Tourism Initiative, and we would have gone to the village of Castara to start a pilot project which is designed to listen to the people of the community and work with them in building a community tourism initiatives. As you are aware, increasing, an increasing number of travelers want to be a part of the responsible tourism initiatives. They want to be a part of the communities um, that they visit within respective countries, and Castara is a good place to start in that regard. I also want to mention that this approach is timely since I have been reliably informed that Castara Retreat is one of the leading hotels or accommodation providers within the Responsible Travel Global Platform, and they have been outpacing the rest of the world by more than 20%. And so it is very clear to all that Castara has a very unique product to offer and we will assist in whatever way possible so that the communities can benefit and so that we can make the experience a more beneficial one to the community as well as the vill villagers who, as well as the tourists who come to be a part of that. And so this project is aimed at listening to the people and working with them in developing what is best for them to maximize the potential of their tourism product. And if it is successful, because as I said, it's the pilot, we will now move to other communities and we have identified the Black Rock Call and area for one um, such uh, discussion and mobilization because the concept is to maximize the benefit for the people of Tobago from the tourism sector. And we believe that such an approach will lead to greater ownership of the sector and most importantly, greater results that has to do with um, sustainability. And so this is where we are at in the Division of Tourism and Transportation. We welcome the Virgin Airways flight on March 29th, uh, 2015. I've reported on the um, success of the cruise sector and the carnival coming to Tobago for the first time. And most importantly, importantly I have provided information with regards to our community thru tourism thrust and or tourism awareness education program that has commenced. This afternoon I want to speak to you about three matters. The hyperbaric chamber, issue of the hyperbaric chamber, the issue of the uh, patient who, who passed on on Monday the 23rd of March, the issue of Dr. Melville and the issue of the maternity report. Yes? So I let me start with the hyperbaric chamber. I want to let you know that uh, we do have the hyperbaric chamber at Roxborough. And this chamber was operated by two technicians and one of whose contract ended last December. I want to let you know that the, I was informed that the Tobago Regional Health Authority has trained six technicians, three nurses, and three doctors. And this is to ensure that they do have adequate coverage at the hyperbaric chamber. So where you had uh, two persons, two technicians managing the hyperbaric chamber, you now have 12 um, additional persons trained to deal with any eventuality. So we really want to let you know this is good news. This is good news and that the public must know that we now have 12 more, um, 12 additional persons six technicians, three nurses, and three doctors. And this is adding to our, both our primary healthcare and our secondary healthcare program, as well as uh, to engage the Divers Association, because the Tobago Regional Health Authority, the 
uh, willing to meet with the Divers Association to continue dialogue along this line. I want to now refer to the passing of Mr. Fitzroy Carrington, a 60-year-old gentleman from, I understand, Moriah. And, and let me firstly express my condolences to the family for the loss of the, of the relative, of the father, husband, and so on. And the postmortem the post is being done today. I want to state that the information I received from the Tobago Regional Health Authority is that the patient was registered at 10.34 a.m. He was triaged at 10.43 and sent to have an ECG done which was completed at 10.49. I am told that he returned to the emergency room. At 11.20 a.m., Mr. Carrington suffered an acute heart attack. He was immediately transferred to critical care resuscitation room and doctors followed all protocol as required, according to this information from the board, and Mr. Carrington passed at 12.30 p.m. This information from the Tobago Regional Health Authority claimed that the family was counseled on site by staff, and additional counseling is was being arranged as per protocol. So that, that um, is the information. I'm really, really sorry for this um, family. Um, further explanation indicated that um, the, the, the ambulance was taking another patient to the hospital when um, they flagged the ambulance down and they gave him the support at that time himself because he was at work and they took him to the hospital. Now what I understood and I have to have more clarification on that in that he did not enter as an ambulance case. He was given a ride on the ambulance and my understanding is that he walked around to, the, um, to be registered. He walked around to be registered so it wasn't as if he was taken as an ambulance patient to the, to the registration. And I need to also um, check on that particular information, but I'm really saddened that we would have lost a, a gentleman in Tobago like that. Okay. Uh, the third information has to do with the, Dr. Melville's in issue. Now, as you know, I did right to the TRHA board asking for the facts in this matter. I was told that the Dr. Melville was on a 12 months contract subject to one month's vacation leave. The board informed me that this contract commenced on May 1st, 2014 and was expected to expire on April 30th, 2015. According to the board, Dr. Melville was expected to proceed on leave with effect from 10th March, 2015. It was in this respect that the board indicated that the letter dated 12th of March was really a reminder to Dr. Melville of the expiration of his contract. That is the information that was given to me, that his contractual agreement um, made by the board was for one year with effect from the 1st of May 2014 and expired 
on the 30th of April 2015. In the case of the maternal death, you know, I, I really want to say this again, that this had been a, a, a really heart-rending um, incident for the hospital as uh, over 20 years they didn't experience a maternal death. And so I've been informed by the uh, Tobago Regional Health Authority Board that they in fact received a document from Dr. Passad. As you know, Dr. Passad is the leader of a team that was contracted to uh, investigate this uh, situation in terms of the maternal and neonatal deaths. And so the board received the document from Dr. Posad, which has been forwarded to the senior state council, Mr. Alvin Pascal. And I am told that the senior state council has made a commitment to communicate with Mr. Shepard and his lawyers within a week's time. He further stated that all information relating to this incident will be made known to Mr. Shepard and as a reasonable body, all that can be done for Mr. Shepard for the loss of his family will be done as soon as possible. You're saying that um, Mr. Melville was on a 12-month contract to mm -hmm. end in April. And That's you're what I've been told. Mm -hmm. The letter he furnished to us um, showed termination mm -hmm. and not to go on leave. Yeah, how, well, how can you explain I, I asked that question uh -huh. and they said the termination really was to avoid doubt that his contract ended. Yeah, because according to the, the, the board, they approved a one-year contract for him. According to the board, they approved a one-year contract for him. And he was told that he should go on leave from the 10th of March. And the, the, um, the board indicated that they, were, they really gave him this letter uh, to avoid doubt. You're saying also that Mr. Carrington, that he was, is, um, he was given a room. But what family members are telling us is he died in the wheelchair in the waiting area. So I'm wondering, mm -hmm. um, okay, this is a person that had chest problems. Mm -hmm. Why is it that um, an oxygen mask or something like that but, wasn't furnished well, in, to him? In terms of that, I think we can um, speak with the, the operations because this is not something that I would have information on. So I would, I would really recommend that we can go deeper into it by speaking with the operational team. What is going to happen after the final report is presented in the case of the shepherds? Mm -hmm. This is between the, in terms of the, the family, in terms of the family. Nonetheless, as you know, um, a report like that is really a management report to ensure that no one, no one in Tobago would experience that, that particular have that particular experience again, no one. We are being told that the gold flight mm -hmm. um, has not been, in terms of the numbers coming to Tobago, sometimes six persons are coming off the plane. Is it that, could you tell us the numbers so far? The thing is, let me say first and foremost, that it takes time to build any new route. And the flight from Brazil to Tobago would have started sometime in January 31st. The Division of Tourism and Transportation has been doing their work in terms of marketing the flight and trying to build networks with the tour operators and the travel agents who will largely sell the flight on behalf of Destination Tobago. This is a flight between Barbados and Tobago. We are responsible for about, I would say, about 50 five to 60 seats, filling those seats on the aircraft. If I am, I am correct, I don't have all of the numbers with me. And, but the point is 
that work is taking place to build the flight. But at the end of the day, it is a relatively new flight. Um, while I don't have the numbers with me in terms of the, the arrivals to date, I will provide that to you um, at a later point. Um, but there are opportunities. It opens up um, travel between Tobago and Brazil. Why did Virgin um, decide to come back to Tobago and there has not been any significant improvements in terms of the international arrivals, um, departure and arrival areas? Well, um, remember that airlines are in business and they operate when they see opportunities. And the numbers indicate that there is growth in the international market. Um, if I call the numbers for British Airways, for instance, I am reliably informed that they are seeing a 60% growth in international passenger um, bookings to destination Tobago. Um, so there are opportunities. Apart from that, you, also, you have the Monarch flight um, leaving the destination. And so Virgin coming back can take up that slack, um, so to speak. Um, apart from that, there was the issue of the business class launch because the airlines make most of their revenue from the front end of the plane. And seeing that work has started on the ANR Robinson Airport to have the business class launch um, in commission, they would have decided that they can now come back to Tobago. Um, and that would have come about as a result of our negotiations. For the new ambulances, what's the status of the new ambulances? Because we were told that they were not being used because they have no oxygen on board? I will have to check that information. I did speak to the CEO on that matter, and I was told that the, the hospital in itself, they produce um, the compact gas, right? So I will have to check that matter and see exactly what is happening there. With reference to the maternal death. Mm -hmm. Are you aware that the lawyer for Mr. Shepard has given the THE 24 hours in which to make that, re that final report public? Yeah, I am aware of that, but the lawyers will talk to each other. The lawyers will talk and move on from there. Thank you for tuning in to another Tobago House of Assembly's post-executive council media briefing for the week ending March 28, 2015.